Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Engine Room Podcast. Today is Wednesday, December 15th, so Dylan, that's me, and Bill and Jacob are here to help you make sense of the news in crypto. Got a lot to get through today, but you should stick around to the end when we talk about the Fed, especially as it relates to the Avalanche project and cryptocurrency. Uh, the first thing that we're going to cover today is that Elizabeth Warren is beating this anti-crypto drum for the second or th maybe even third time quite recently. She's talking about stable coins posing a major threat to the way that the government uh, does business, basically. And the popular critique last time was, yeah, Senator Warren, that's the whole idea. Bill, Jacob, obviously we're not surprised that the senator is repeating her thoughts, but what does it mean that we have this high position senator who's emerged as an opponent as opposed to a crypto proponent? Okay, well, I, I think when popular public figures want to change the subject, they talk about crypto. Example, Elon Musk sells $10 billion in Tesla stock to all the little retail investors. Then to change the subject from that deed, he talks about Doge. So if the Democratic Party's poll numbers get low enough, Senator Warren hits Twitter to get attention with, I don't know, I, I'm upset about blank. Want, 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 want. So it's just, a, it's just a temporary change in narrative or ratings. Jacob, talk to us about PacDAO, because as Elizabeth Warren is saying, Crypto is bad. It doesn't belong in politics. There's a new DAO called PacDAO that seems to be taking quite the opposite position. What do we need to know about PacDAO? Yeah, so I, I was going to bring this up because I, I thought it's a, it's a great example of why crypto is so impactful. And maybe this is why Warren is so against it is because she sees how impactful it can be. So so it's called PacDAO, which is a political action committee here in the United States. It's You can lobby to government officials by pretty much paying them money to say what you want that, that that's that's the the premise of what a political action committee or a pack is they also have super packs and all this other stuff political jargon but this is a pack dao so it's a a political action committee dao and they're they're committed to on-chain activism or crypto activism Right now, it's actually a really small community. I just heard of it in one of my Telegram groups. They have 500 followers on Twitter and about 200 members in their Discord. But you can buy their PacDAO founder token. And yeah, they're, they're trying to lobby for crypto. And, and someone also mentioned in that same Telegram group, hey, get PacDAO to vote out Warren if she's so against crypto. And then, then she'll see how powerful crypto is. Yeah, we will see. It's heating up. It's heating up. Uh, anyway, moving right along, uh, we got to talk about this news item that actually broke yesterday, but is kind of making the rounds today. Uh, about $33.5 billion worth of ETH is stuck in a gigantic Ethereum contract. The specific contract is an Ethereum 2.0 beacon chain staking contract that's only set to kick into effect when Ethereum actually uh, switches to proof of stake consensus. So the basic soundbite version of this story is that somebody is so excited to get started staking their ETH that they've already pledged $33.5 billion worth of it. And we don't exactly know when this staking goes live, and we furthermore don't even understand the terms of, the, of that staking. So, Bill, you were suggesting that this might be some large institution or, or, or central bank, uh, because who, who has $33 billion to burn? What what else do you make of this? We may never know who this is. To, if, if I if to be real, okay, yeah, I mean, it, it could be a central bank who wants to have say. Uh, I was actually just thinking maybe it's Vitalik and his organization or his pool, or like Vitalik Dow, who wants to draw the Ethereum story away from gas fees, and somehow run a commercial, you know, with this wallet address. Telling everybody, hey, proof of stake is coming. Ethereum's not dead yet. Yeah, I mean, it it just shows the trust that people have in Ethereum. And if Bill's right and it is Vitalik, then that makes a lot of sense. But but yeah, people, th this person, this entity, this institution, without knowing what the terms of the hard fork is going to be, without knowing specific kind of how this staking is going to work, how Ethereum 2.0 is gonna happen there's they're pledging 33.5 bill billion dollars 
That's a, that's a lot of money. And obviously we knowing Ethereum, it's promised to, to be completed, to be proof of stake quarter one or quarter two, but we really don't know. It could, it could be quarter four. So, so yeah, it shows the trust that people have in Ethereum or it could just be Vitalik and very smart advertising. We, time will tell, perhaps. Time will tell, perhaps. Uh, let's now talk about Sotheby's, which is really beginning to make a name for itself in crypto. And, and to put some numbers to that this year, uh, Sotheby's specifically has made $100 million from NFT sales in 2021. So some more numbers about this. Uh, they have so far made $6 billion total uh, in 2021. And that number is actually up 71% from last year. Uh, Sotheby's is taking Ethereum. Uh, they're selling NFTs. Uh, what's next? I mean, when, when will, uh, when will most of Sotheby's income become crypto guys? It seems like it's headed that direction for, for NFTs being such a dominant narrative in, uh, 2021 crypto. Uh, it seems like an organization like Sotheby's is poised to really, really thrive going into the future, no? Well, I think if there's money to be made and rich people need to part with money for status, um, you know, isn't that what Sotheby's does, right? It, it's auctions, status items. Most of the time that's art, even though that's traditional. Um, why would they not get into the status game? So it's, it's really, you know, NFTs as status. Does that, does that narrative continue? I don't know, but you know, why would Sotheby's not want to make money on that? Especially if it generates headlines and PR. I mean, what 25 year old talks about Sotheby's? Yeah, I, I think, I think the N NFT game has revived Sotheby's because honestly, I, I heard of it. I didn't know exactly what it was. I couldn't have told you that it was an auction house. But now I think most people in crypto, most people my age, be like, oh, yeah, Sotheby's. Didn't they sell that NFT that sold for $69 million? Or didn't they have a collection of bored apes and mutant apes and et cetera? So, so yeah, I, I think it was a, a great move to uh, uh, revive themselves through auctioning off NFTs. Yeah. So some of their greatest hits from the past year here in terms of NFTs, Sotheby's sold an NFT of the original World Wide Web source code for $5.3 million. They sold one CryptoPunk for $11.8 million. And then they sold a big collection of 101 Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs for $24.4 million. And obviously they sold a bunch more, but those are some of the standouts there. All right. Uh, I definitely want to throw it over to Bill now. We're going to talk about the situation with the Fed and Avalanche. Bill, please take us away. What's What do we need to know? How are we trading? And what keeps us alive right now? All right. Thank you. So December 15th, middle of the day, about two hours before the Fed decision comes out. So if you're tuning into the Token Metrics podcast, good for you. This is the early read on the Fed. So as you may know, my job at Token Metrics is to predict the future while levitating live on camera. So here is the Fed preliminary plan. Keep in mind, no plan survives contact. And we can all check this a month or a year from now to see if I got it right. So here goes. The Fed will make an announcement that inflation is a problem. We know this. There will likely be a relief rally on this news because we will know where the Fed stands and the Fed may not say anything that's going to ruin Christmas. I doubt that they want to do that. Then Thursday, reality may set in. There may be a decline in equities and a possible flash crash in crypto that could lead to 42K Bitcoin or 3,400 or 3K Ethereum. Then what will happen after that, because Avalanche is already telling you by rallying that crypto, even if it goes down, will come raging back. And if there's ever been a time in history where equities and crypto would decouple with equities slumping and crypto rallying, it could be this moment. So crypto YouTube generally thinks the market is going to zero after the Fed comes out. I beg to differ. Uh, I believe the saying is we are all going to make it. Think positive, act responsibly. Can't think of a better way to end it. Thank you for putting all this into context, Bill. 
Uh, guys, the name of this podcast is Engine Room. You can watch us on YouTube. You can listen to us in your headphones. At any rate, we want to encourage you to subscribe to the Token Metrics YouTube channel. We've got videos like this coming out every day uh, about how to help you make money in crypto. So uh, be a friend and tell a friend to listen and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thank you.